With the apparent crumbling of Stability AI and the circus show that was the release of Stable Diffusion 3, many thought that this was the end of open source image generation models. But instead, we've been gifted with a deluge of different open source models released by different groups. With the recently released AuraFlow model being hailed as what we should have gotten instead of Stable Diffusion 3. However, not two weeks since the release of the 0.2 AuraFlow model, a new player in the field, Black Forest, made up of none other than the former SDXL team, has come out of the blue and released Flow 1.0. And if you thought Aura Flow was impressive, this model is absolutely next level. Now, like Stability AI, Black Forest is a company and it looks like they are a bit more for profit. Despite that, they still seem to hold the open source community in very high regard. To that extent, they've released three versions of the model. One is the dev model. This one is non-commercial. However, if you dive into the terms that they've released with it, it seems like you can ask for a license to use this model. Then there's the Schnell model, which appears to be a lightning based model, which is commercial ready to use. If you want to use it in your project, the terms are already there. And then they have a closed source version of the model, which they release via their API. Similar to Stable Diffusion 3, they've saved the best model for their private API. However, both the dev and Schnell models are very impressive and can certainly solve the problem that Stable Diffusion 3 had of putting women on grass. I will say I am a little disappointed that the dev model doesn't have commercial terms as it is very impressive and I think it's better than the Schnell model. However, the Schnell model is still very capable and I can definitely see it being commercially ready. So with that, let's dive in and see how we can get it running on Comfy UI. So first, we're gonna head over to the Black Forest Labs Hugging Face page. Links are down below. Now over here, you'll see the two available versions of the model, the Schnell and Dev models. The process is exactly the same for both. So choose the model that you wanna work with. I've actually downloaded both and I'll show you some examples of both of them a little later in the video. For this example, let's jump into Schnell, head over to files and versions, and what you're gonna wanna download is the Flux1 Schnell or Flux1 Dev if you're on the dev page, and the AE SFT. Now you'll notice these extensions, SFT, these are basically safe tensor files, so you don't need to worry about them. And once you've downloaded them, go ahead into your Comfy UI models folder. Now, typically you'd put your checkpoint folders in the checkpoints folder or stable diffusion folder depending on the version of comfy that you're using in this case however we're going to go ahead and place our model in the unit folder down here then the ae file that you're going to grab over here go ahead and put that into your ve folder over here so put that in here that's the ve that we're going to be using because of the way the model is provided it's almost discombobulated so all of the elements are split apart, including the text encoder. So to make sure that all of that works, the Comfy UI team have actually created a example page on their GitHub. Again, link is down below, and I'll also link the files directly so it's easy for you. If we look here at the examples page, they recommend for us to download the T5XXL clip. Now, if you'll remember, this is the same one that we use with Stable Diffusion 3. So it's the same text encoder that Stable Diffusion 3 uses. If we follow the link, it gives us all of the versions here. Now, you're going to want to download Clip L and either the FP16 or FP8 version. Now, on the Comfy UI example page, they recommend the FP16 version if you have more than 32 gigs of RAM. I also believe the FP16 one uses more VRAM. So if you are VRAM or RAM constraint, I recommend sticking with the FP8. That's the one that I've been using on my 3090 and the results have been phenomenal. And once you've downloaded the Clip L and the T5 XXL of your choice, go ahead and put those over in the models clip folder. So they go in here and that's it. You're done. Now here on the examples page, both of these images that the Comfy UI team have provided serve as examples. So you can go ahead and download them, drag them into Comfy, and you'll have a workflow to start with. Let's go in and have a look at the workflow to get an understanding of what all of the components are. So if you drag in one of the examples, you'll get a workflow that looks something like this. And you'll notice this looks very different from your typical SDXL workflow. 
However, if we break it down, you'll find it's not actually that different. So if we start over here with the sampler, if you've watched my AYS video, you'll notice that we use a similar version of that sampler. In this case, it's the sampler custom advanced. Like your regular K sampler, it's going to take in your model, your conditioning, your latent image, as well as the parameters that you need to run the image generation. The only difference here is that all of those parameters are set up as nodes. So let's go through the nodes one by one. Over here, we've got the first one labeled as noise. If we follow that node over, we'll see here random noise. This is essentially our seed. Then the next node we've got over here is guider. And there's also a few other variants of that guider. As you can see here, we've got one that can take a positive and negative conditioning as well as an empty one. Another one that can take in multiple positive conditionings and a negative one and then a simple model and positive negative one. So if you want to take advantage of those, go ahead. They'll all output the standard guider node, which you can feed into the sampler custom advanced. The guider takes in the model and takes in the conditioning. And if we follow the conditioning, we've got here the clip text encoder and clip is being fed in by the dual clip loader. Since we're not using the traditional model loader, instead we're using the load diffusion model, it doesn't have a clip node. We need to provide that separately by using the dual clip loader where we load in our T5 XXL encoder as well as a secondary clip L. You can also specify down here what type of model is going to be using this. So whether it's SDXL, SD3 or Flux. If we come back to the sampler, moving on past guider, we see sampler. And this is where we just feed in the sampler that we're going to be using. This is fairly standard Euler or whichever sampler you want to use. Then we have sigmas, which again, simply specifies the scheduler that you're going to use, the steps and the denoising rate. And once again, you just feed in the model here. And finally, the latent image, fairly standard. So as you can see, once we break down the sampler custom, it's not that complicated. I'm sure that we will see the K sampler receive support for these flux models in the very near future. Finally, as I mentioned earlier, we load up the VE separately and we use the AE VE that we had from earlier, connect the image to the image output, and we're ready to go. Let's go ahead and generate. And we can see here, we are able to replicate the prompt perfectly. If you're interested to my patrons, which by the way, you should check out if you want to support the channel, the help of my patrons helps make this content possible. And I try and make available to my patrons little extra benefits like the workflow that I'm about to show you. Without you guys, it wouldn't be possible to make these videos. So I appreciate every single one of you. So if we have a look at this workflow, it's one that I have put together to actually compare some of the new models that we've gotten recently. So this group up here is set up for Flux. I have a more standard one for Aura Flow, which does use the traditional SDXL model format. And then I've got one down here for colors. I haven't had a chance to add in, I think it's called the Heian, Heian models. Uh, I will be doing that later, but it's a great way to take the same prompt, same seed uh, and a few other parameters and just run it across the different models to see what the output is like for comparison. And I'll show you a couple of those examples. Flux is very impressive. That's all I'm going to say. So let's compare. So I reran the exact same prompt on a different seed for Flux with the anime style made girls. And of course, this is what we got. One thing I will notice, which you will see as a trend in Flux, they fixed fingers. Finally, this model is consistently good at producing decent hands, decent fingers. It's not 100% perfect. I've seen a few examples where you still get too many fingers, but the success rate is better than anything else I've seen. So this is the flux one. I then ran the same prompt, same seed, same parameters on both Aura Flow 0.1 and 0.2. And this is what we got. This is the 0.1 version. And this is the 0.2 version. And surprisingly, I will say I do actually prefer the 0.1 version. Um, I do have another video coming up specifically on Aura Flow and 0.2 update comparing the differences, but I haven't gotten there yet. But based on this, I do prefer the aesthetics of 0.1. Hands again seem to be pretty decent, not as good as what Flux is doing. 0.2 is doing a better job. The hands do look a little bit better, but I just prefer the art style from 0.1. I, I'm honestly shocked to see such a huge difference in the art style considering 0.2 is an iteration above 0.1. So I'm curious to see what the changes that they've made are. And finally, this is the same prompt and everything running through the new colors model. And I have to say the result here is actually incredibly frustrating because while I do love the aesthetic 
that Colors has produced? Those hands. Those hands. After seeing Aura Flow and Flux, it's kind of hard to go back to this. Not gonna lie. Uh, I did try to tweak the parameters slightly with the Colors model to try and get those fingers back, but no matter what, it's not quite there. Moving on from the anime aesthetic, I decided to try something a little bit more realistic. I tweaked the prompt slightly and removed the anime component, the maid's dress component. I stuck to keeping it in a Victorian mansion. I changed the location to an entrance hall. I changed the what the character was holding from a food item to a clipboard. And pretty much left it at that. Left a few detailing and ran it. So starting from colors, this is what we got for colors. Okay, decent start, very reminiscent of SDXL, few issues on the face. I would almost want to pass this through a refiner or an upscaler to see a significant improvement. I would say it's SDXL level of quality. Ugh. Okay, so uh, both Aura Flow 0.1 and 0.2 uh, basically created the same image. Yeah, it's exactly the same. So 0 0.1, 0 0.2, same prompt, same seed, same settings gave back this. Uh, further experimentation will be required. I have a feeling it has to do with the prompting. Despite that though, the hands still look decent. I mean, the basic shapes are there. The basic definition of the fingers are there. I can only see it improving from here. And now, and now, and now, it's time for the flux model. Oh, look at that. That is such a massive improvement on all the other models. Unfortunately, I didn't have time to set up a comparison with Stable Diffusion 3. If you stay tuned to my blog, I will post additional experiments there and I will update the workflow so that it's got Stable Diffusion 3 in there as well. But those hands are almost perfect. Face is phenomenal, great lighting. Even the room layout, which can have issues a lot of time with these diffusion-based models. Unless you're looking at it closely, on a first glance, it seems okay. But, you know, if we dive in a bit deeper, we can see here some funny business happening with that chair. This alcove seems a little out of place. I'm guessing these will be things to be improved on. I can't wait to try this out with Control Net. From here, I decided to just experiment a bit more with Flux and try out a few different prompts. Let's have a look at the text encoding capability. So I tried a female knight walking down the street with the words Flux burning in fire behind her. And this is what we got. Again, impressive. I mean, the, the human proportions are perfect right off the bat. I even love how she's kind of walking and not quite landing on that foot, but about to take off on the other one. Uh, interesting little detail. Body proportions look great. Hands, again, look great. Face looks great. I, I really don't have too many complaints uh, other than they misspelled flux. Um, it seems to be struggling a bit here. I can see the F here. It's kind of combined the F and the L, right? You've got the F and then the L is here and then U and X but it did spell it correctly back here, even though I didn't specify that. Now, what's really interesting about the Schnell model is I wasn't aware that Lightning models did this. I don't remember the SDXL one doing this. What I do remember is if you change the number of stats, whether you're doing four or 20, it's typically the same image, maybe slightly more refined. What the Schnell model does is if you tweak the number of steps, so this is a 20, I went to four and uh, there are quite some sub substantive differences to the point where we're seeing changes in armor. Certain steps give you a full head of armor. Some just give you the, the headband, um, which is very fascinating. So that got me thinking to try the dev model. And I do have to say the dev model is amazing. As the dev model should, it performs a bit more like regular stable diffusion where the number of steps simply refines the output and doesn't make such substantial changes like the lightning one does. This is the same prompt running on death. Oh, now this is next level. The details are so much more phenomenal. And this is why it absolutely kills me that off the bat, the dev model is non-commercial because I'm sure lots of community members would love to build on top of this and having their ability to monetize it seems frustrating at best, even if the Chanel model is already impressive. I mean, look, character face is great, proportions are great, hands are great. The text is actually written properly in fire in the background. Flux is right there. Right here are just some variations on the step and you can see not a huge amount of difference, just a little bit of detailing here and there. I then tested out the same model with a different scheduler. I tried Paris this time. 
Um, this is with 20 steps and this is with 35 steps. So again, I love it. it it's just got this fantastic cinematic vibe. I will say with the Kara scheduler, we do start to get some funny business here in the hands. Um, she's really holding that sword in a very strange way. But again, nothing that can't be fixed without a detailer. I then tried out something a little bit different with a female pirate standing on the bow of a ship with the word flux written on the bow. Pretty decent. Uh, again, I can see this looking a lot better once we upscale it. It's not quite what I had in mind, but the text is very clear. She is standing on the bow of the ship, quite a different seed, and this is what we got. So, uh, seems to struggle a bit with this one. If you may notice this is blurred out a bit here. Yeah, it kind of forgot the L, and I'll let you figure out what that spelled. But all in all, uh, this is a really impressive start for the Flux team. Now, it is a step, many steps ahead of the other open source models that have come out like Colors and Auraflow, but remember, Auraflow is still at 0.2. The Flux team have labeled this as their 1.0 model and it definitely shows. I'll be very curious to see how the other open source models develop, especially with Auraflow having released 0.2 so soon after 0.1. I can only hope that this new environment of multiple open source model creators will just help feed and speed up development the way that is happening in the large language model space. For the longest time, Stability AI has been the only major player creating image generation models. And to a certain extent, I couldn't help but feel that that has kept development moving at whatever pace Stability AI wanted to go. The big problem for me as a content creator is how the heck do I keep up? But that's my problem, not your problem. Thanks. I'll catch you guys in the next one.